There is no example in human history that better prepares us to suffer with Jesus than the example of Our Lady Co-Redemptrix. And in Our Lady's messages as Our Lady of America, she not only specifies her role as the Co-Redemptrix of the human race, but she talks about the, the fruitfulness and the inevitability of us suffering with her. Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. We're going through the messages of Our Lady of America, once again established as already having ecclesiastical approval by Archbishop Raymond Burke. And these messages are especially for the United States, not exclusively, but especially for the United States. But my gosh, they're so rich and there's so much in these. We have to hear them and that becomes a, 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 a possibility, an opportunity for us to respond to these. Uh, I'm going to read to you today the message of February 11th, uh, 1958. It's on the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. And if you remember in the earlier messages of Our Lady of America, she first appears as Our Lady of Lourdes, but then she promises that the spiritual graces that would come if her image of Our Lady of America is solemnly processed into the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. by the U.S. bishops, that graces would be more than the graces of Lourdes and Fatima, not of the physical order, but of the spiritual order, particularly pertaining to purity and conversion. So it's appropriate that, again, on this Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes in 1958, she would give a powerful message about her role as co-redemptrix in our call to suffer. It reminds me of John Paul II while he was still Cardinal Wojtyla on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th in 1973, who told us that Mary is co-redemptrix because she was first the Immaculate Conception. What does that mean? It means God prepared her to be full of grace and free from sin so she could be the perfect partner, the perfect human partner with Jesus in restoring grace to the human family. Let's listen to our, her words in um, given through Sister Mildred in these approved apparitions, February 11, 1958. This again is from the memoirs of Sister Mildred. My immaculate heart will win in the end and the Spirit of Christ will dwell in the hearts of men. Those in whom this Spirit is not found will be condemned to eternal hellfire. The next day, the next day Our Lady spoke again. My child, nothing is accomplished without pain. Prepare to suffer much. You see the sword in the heart of your mother. Suffering completed the work of divine grace in my soul. He who refuses to suffer will never abide in the Spirit of Christ, will never be formed into his image. My sweet child, the Father will never recognize a soul as his own unless he sees in it the likeness of his beloved Son. Souls must attain to the perfection of the Father through the Spirit of the Son. Beloved daughter, you wonder at the sword and deep wound it has made in my heart. It is the sword of grief plunged therein by my children, who refuse to let me teach them the true way. There is only one true way to the Father, my child, only one way to eternal union. It is the way of the divine humanity. It is through my Son, the only begotten of the Father, that souls attain perfect union with the divinity, as perfect as human nature is capable of, aided by divine grace. But my children will not heed, they will not listen. Every other way they will take, but not this one. Now, Our Lady continues, but just briefly commenting on this, Our Lady is saying that, you know, we're going to have to suffer. This is part of Christian life. It seems like generations in the past were much more prepared and expecting to suffer in life. It's really our generation and perhaps the generation before our generation that had this idea that uh, we could have a human life without suffering. Um, generations of past expected to lose a couple children in childbirth uh, or in, in, in infancy. Uh, now, it's a good thing that that's not commonplace for us, but it's a bad thing that we expect now to live without serious sufferings, without any swords in our heart. If we follow Jesus and we follow the way of the fullness of holy Catholic living, we're going to suffer. But the, the other element of that is our Lord and our Mother join us in the suffering. They give us the grace to suffer 
and suffering is so redemptive. So it's, as she says, the wound in the Immaculate Heart of Mary is her children refusing to let them, themselves being taught the true way. And the true way is to the Father only through Jesus and with the cross. Now Our Lady continues, uh, I ask greater sacrifices of the most favored and beloved of my children. I ask in the name and for the love of my son who desires this. I ask this for reformation of life. It is first from the chosen that I look for it. They must, by the example of a sacrificial life, lead the way for souls to union with Christ, honoring the Father by putting on His Spirit and His likeness in all things. O oh, my small one, beloved of my son's heart, prepare yourself by prayer, penance, and suffering for what is to come. Your mother has many more things to tell you, but this is enough for now. Take your rest now, I wish it. Good night, my sweet child. Towards the evening of February 11th, I heard these words addressed to me by Our Lady. Quote, I am the mother of the sacred humanity, and it is my special work as co-redemptrix of the human race to help souls reach the sanctity of the Father in union eternally by showing them how to put on Christ, to imbibe His Spirit, and thus become one with Him. I'm tempted to ask the question, how many times does Our Lady have to call herself co-redemptrix? Through her apparitions, things like Our Lady of America, Our Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam, Akita, and even when Mary appears as Our Lady of Sorrows at Fatima, how many times does she have to say this for us to accept that this is the perfect icon for us in trying to understand suffering? Let's be honest, who likes suffering? Suffering's hard. It's difficult for each one of us. What's Our Lady asking? She's asking, number one, for us to show up in our missions. Whatever our vocation is, to show up, to be there. John showed up at Calvary. We're called to show up for our crosses. Number two is to trust in the graces that Our Lady will give us, that she will support us in each and every cross we're asked to do. Our mother's not going to ask us to do a cross that's too much for us. We know that. And Our, our Lady's not going to get us to, the, to Calvary and then desert us at Calvary. Because she is the Mediatrix of all graces. She knows what our Lord knows in this order, that we have to have her graces to sustain us. She knows, and we should know, we can't carry the cross by ourselves. But our Lord and our Mother have prepared the way for us to carry these crosses. That's why she says specifically, this is my special work as co-redemptrix of the human race to help souls reach the sanctity of the Father in eternal union by showing them how to put on Christ, to imbibe His Spirit and thus become one with Him. So, in the midst of the cross that you have today, you're facing crosses today, each of us have our crosses today, in the midst of that cross, call upon Our Lady Co-Redemptrix for grace. Have confidence that she will be able to mediate for the graces you need right now. If it's a family issue, she knows and she can give you grace. If it's a financial issue, she knows and she can bring you grace. If it's a fundamental faith issue, if it's the world pulling, tugging at you to, to, to do things you know you're not supposed to, if it's addictions of sex or drugs, she knows she has the graces for you. She's suffered for them with Jesus, our divine Redeemer, so that we could have the grace to, to uh, embrace our crosses today. We can do it with her. She's the co-redemptrix. We're called to be co-redeemers in Jesus. This is Mark Miravalli saying that Our Lady of America is coming to our country to prepare us for challenges, but we have to have hope and joy because we can do it with joy, with faith, because of Jesus and our Mother. This is Mark Miravalli with Mary Cass saying, God bless.